Welcome to Winning STL, where we have conversations about how St. Louis can best compete and win in the battle for talent, jobs, growth, and equity. Winning STL is presented by Purina, who creates richer lives for pets and the people who love them, and is proudly called St. Louis home since 1894. Joining me today is Tim Lucchini, CEO of Intramotive, a St. Louis startup company that converts conventional freight cars to battery-powered, self-propelled rail cars. Tim, thanks so much for coming today. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. So, Tim, thanks so much for joining today, and thank you for hosting in this absolutely giant facility that you have here. Uh, I gave an attempt to describe what Intramotive does, but why don't you tell us what it does, why it's important. Uh, effectively, what we build is a battery electric self-propelled rail car. So we make a rail car that's backwards compatible with the rest of the freight rail system, but enables point-to-point -point material movement, kind of like that speed and flexibility of a truck, but leveraging that existing strengths of the freight rail infrastructure, which for a lot of people is out of sight, out of mind, but is absolutely uh, massive and a huge part of our backbone of our uh, industrial base. Right, and, and so help, help us understand why can this be transformative? Why is it important to be able to have an electric rail car piece to the freight system and the rail system that we have? Yeah, so the rail system's uh, built on the mindset of 200 to 300 cars that might need to move together or a two or three mile long train that all needs to move together. That two or three mile long train might be the width of Manhattan that all has to move together, which means it's gonna be fast and flexible if it's going from consistent point to points and you have that much material. Right. But if you have individual units that you need to move, that means it's a latency and queue that has to get built up. And what we're building is a rail car that can be backwards compatible with that system. So I can go from the Port of Long Beach to Chicago or Port of Long Beach to St. Louis. But when I get to St. Louis, that two miles of stuff isn't all getting consumed in one place. It's got to get all of our different municipalities and cities in the area. Okay, so simplified, at least for, for my non-engineering brain, Tim, yeah. you are not, you're not tied to 200 cars or 300 cars. You could have a handful or a small number of cars that gives great operational flexibility, maybe? Is that, is that fair? Yeah, so the Intramotive Tugvolt's designed to run in three modes. The first mode is point-to-point. -point. So you can think of a semi-truck and how that moves materials today. The second mode is it can pull traditional rail cars with it, so one to five units or so, okay. enabling the unit economics of a two mile long train, but with one to five cars at a time. And then the last mode is we can go in that normal train, and we can turn the whole train into a hybrid, uh, taking load off the engines and reducing diesel consumption. So it doesn't replace traditional freight rail. It sounds like it works with it or augments it. Is, is, that, is that accurate? Yeah, we think of it as complementing the existing strengths of rail offering that speed and flexibility. And as the world moves towards just-in-time delivery of everything, whether it's your Amazon order getting to the same day delivery, rail has to move in that same direction and it needs new tools to do that. Your company, I think, is the only one doing this right now in rail, is that right? Yeah, it's exciting to be doing that in St. Louis where we are the only people in the world pushing uh, close to a million tons of material in production uh, this year, moving independent freight cars uh, in this way. Uh, it's a, a huge challenge to bring something new like this to the marketplace, but it is also one of those places where when you look at it and you dive deep into it, you would think this makes sense. Why wasn't this first? Yeah. T Tim, what are, you mentioned challenges. What are the challenges in bringing this to you know, scale and, and to where you want it to be? Yeah. So we're five years old now. Uh, we're uh, about 50 employees. Some of the biggest challenges for us to get to this point, which is now an inflection point for our business, is going from a couple of people with an idea to a couple of people with a product to a couple of people with a product and a customer and getting that fully deployed and out in the field. That's been a huge challenge and pathway to get the capital, get the excitement, get the awareness of why these are important problems to solve. And then going forward, of course, there's future challenges of working through regulatory environments, working through uh, the ability of, of continuing to grow and staff the, the business that way we have. Um, but uh, those are all manageable challenges and uh, excited that we did hit this inflection point for our business as we go into these first regulated use cases. T Tim, how does St. Louis's background as a center of rail, um, is that helpful? I mean, there's a reason why you started it here, I guess. Yep. T tell, tell me about that. No, I think of St. Louis a lot, uh, and I think about why we would be here for this business. And one of the things is the history of St. Louis is built on the legacy of freight rail infrastructure, which connected the country in the first place. Right. It's river, rivers and rails that, that made St. Louis what which it is. That's why we're here, right? Um, and that's really what, what prepares it for the next 200 years. Well, I love hearing that because St. Louis is really, I think, 
um, really trying to focus on what are the industries of the future? You know, yep. geospatial, uh, biotech, advanced manufacturing. It sounds like you see this being another pillar. Certainly. Um, so one of the uh, uh, pillars is logistics and, and supply chains. And, and St. Louis, everything going east to west and north to south has an option. That is actually a hugely impactful piece. We have rivers, rails, and we also have the highway ecosystem, which right. can make this a huge logistics hub and, and logistics ecosystem. Uh, Tim, you told me something else off camera that I was shocked by, which is how much rail infrastructure there is in the country compared to highways. So do, do us a favor to share that with your with our viewers. I mean, rail is out of sight, out of mind for most people, but yeah. it's an immense expansive network. So you have 160,000 miles of track across the U.S. So there's 47,000 miles of highway. So you have almost three times as much track running across the entire country. And that infrastructure is utilized generally at a 3% utilization rate. But that just means there's a ton of network capacity that small trains and, and independent units can actually fit between. Got it. And that if you bring a, a, a doubling in the rail traffic, the networks can handle that. There is a plenty of infrastructure available. Uh, we just have to use it better and, and use it smarter and lean into all these 2025 20, plus technologies everybody's talking about from intelligent design, intelligent mobility, uh, and electrification, which can enable all of it. So Tim, wh where Intramoda finds itself today? What are the, the stages of success that you see next that you're looking to kind of tick off and move on to make this thing as big as you see the opportunity? So today we've been proving out the private markets and uh, that might be one to 10 miles in, in uh, span. Next is 10 to 100 miles in span and then 100 to 1,000 miles. But we keep building that up logically from these endpoints uh, where as you get to the spokes of this hub and spoke model, oftentimes unit economics can get the most perverse and there's also the most opportunity. Got it. And then you drive to these main lines, which are already pretty efficient uh, and we can add more efficiency to that, but we do it with the proving it out on all of these disparate uh, uh, fragmented use cases. Tim, what could, if this idea is, is as successful as, as you are working to make it, yep. 10 years, 15, 20 years, what could it mean for St. Louis? It's huge for St. Louis, and I don't see a future where this doesn't exist. So right now in St. Louis, we have a huge opportunity to be the first and to build it and yeah. to make this uh, feasible. But if you say, hey, I'm gonna make this rail car drive itself down this fixed infrastructure, most of the time people's mindset is, does that already exist? Why doesn't it already exist? And we get to be the first to bring that which offers speed, flexibility, and low cost, and the best uh, transportation system for any type of freight. Um, and that really is a paradigm shift. And it seems to me that it is moving because not too many years ago, it was just a couple guys in an office, right? And we're yeah. in this giant industrial space now with rail cars that can, can literally come into the space. So it feels like to an outsider that things are happening. Certainly, it, and it's just uh, keep that momentum moving forward and, and get this community uh, understanding what these ideas are and what this means for our area. Um, and then also leverage uh, some of the most amazing things of this business. And it's interesting, I didn't think and think about this until you said it, but with our legacy of engineering, uh, Boeing is an obvious one, but with WashU and, and some other great schools here, sounds like that's an advantage for you and for our region. It's a huge advantage. We have the workforce, we have the talent, um, and uh, it's an opportunity to make St. Louis, it's already sticky make it a little more sticky and give people opportunities to help build something that is the future. How has the experience of, of leading a startup in St. Louis been? Is it, is it um, an environment that's encouraging? Have you found it to be positive or, you know, you tell me. Yeah, uh, St. Louis is a great place. This is the place to build a business like this. Um, and it's also an opportunity. So I'm spending a lot of time traveling to the coast, broadcasting nationally why St. Louis is a great place to be. Right. Uh, American dynamism in, is in, uh, reindustrialization is in, and, and St. Louis should be core and center to those conversations because we do have facilities just like this one, which can breathe new life into them and, and revitalize what St. Louis is. Um, and there's more of these facilities uh, that, that we can bring jobs back to and connect in, and, and mobility is core to making all that happen. Are there things that you'd like to see, uh, let's say, political leaders or maybe the business community do to make it easier for people like yourself or the next person out there or the next group of people that has a great idea? Yeah, no, I, I'll commend the community uh, and the business community. Things like Arch Grants is a huge seed starting point where yeah. we do have three people with an idea and no resources. A little bit of resources can go a long way in those types of scenarios. People like Rankin 
who have been doing yeah. the, the workforce training right. long before it was in vogue. Wash U is a world tier university. How do we keep the jobs that people that are coming fresh out of those uh, school environments want to take right away? Get build to something here, like this, right? Yeah, not just go back to the coasts or anywhere else. You build businesses like this that get people excited and motivated to lean in and come to a place where in three months, you're gonna get three years worth of experience because of how quickly we have to move uh, to be competitive and stay ahead. Tim, you've been here, I think you told me for over a decade, right? So you're one of us now. Um, have you seen some of these things get better in terms of the, the culture and the business culture and the startup culture? Yeah, certainly. I think it is getting better and it can still go a long way to continue to get better. So uh, part of our job uh, at Intramotive is to champion that mission that we are building businesses in St. Louis and we are making this an ecosystem that's been this business friendly. I mean, the city can make uh, a couple bets and one of the bets is doing nothing, which is guaranteed that, that you're going to have exactly what you have now. Right. Whereas you'd make a bet, all the bets don't have to pan out. A couple of the bets can be huge and that'll offset any of the uh, attempts that didn't work out. Um, and we just need to do that a little bit more. It's not a huge, crazy idea, and we need good founders to start good businesses to, to grow this ecosystem and, and continue to feed itself. Yeah, I was in Detroit last week. That business community got behind, okay, Detroit, it doesn't necessarily have the best reputation nationally. Right. We're gonna change it. And I think in St. Louis, we do the exact same thing. We should start changing the reputation that we have. I feel like Detroit's really embraced their history and even their challenges and are saying, look, this is our comeback story and it's America's comeback story. I feel like St. Louis is very much, um, you know, very similar to that. Yeah, we, we have that opportunity right in front of us. Um, where there is uh, hardship, where there is disruption, right. there's always opportunity. And right now we have uh, that opportunity to lean on on multiple fronts and this can change the way that people think about our city. Tim, I'm always interested in getting the perspective of people that weren't born and raised here. So what's the experience been like for you? What are we doing right? Had the chance to live in the city, had the chance to live in the, the periphery of the city and right. see the benefits of both. You can have everything you want here. Cost of living, family life, everything else is, is huge yeah. positives that uh, aren't championed in near as much as, as they should be. I think sometimes people that aren't from here or maybe a little bit uh, quicker to see opportunity because you're not uh, as bogged down with, well, we used to have this or we used to have that. You know, I'm imagining someone like you coming in and saying, well, see, look at this building. You guys didn't build it. It's one of the largest buildings I've ever been in, maybe one of the warmest too on a, on a hot July day. But um, this is infrastructure that St. Louis has from its past that you guys are reimagining, right. which I think is Fantastic. Yeah, and, and a consistent message that rallies people in the same direction. I think uh, St. Louis, we can find that around reshoring, reindustrialization, American right. dynamism. And uh, if we want to shorten the distance from where we build stuff to any part of the country, we should do it right here in St. Louis. And, and we are the, the closest point to every other place if you locate a factory. Here. And, and so obviously electric rail can and should be a really big part of that. Certainly. I, we can access every part of North America from right here and not every city and municipality can do that. So Tim, as a, uh, as a resident, not just a business leader here, but as a resident, what do, where do we get in our own way? What are the things that you think hold us back to being what we could be? What we do need is more conversations like this about what are we gonna do that's the positive momentum that focuses us all in the right direction. Uh, and that is, in my mindset, getting people excited about building businesses here, growing those businesses here and scaling into the workforce and, and talent pool that we do have. Um, and having more and more of these conversations that are in that positive mindset, get people continually talking about those ideas and then you'll find weird intersections. Rail and aerospace, should they really be intersecting? Maybe not, but in St. Louis they are. They, yeah. And exactly at that uncommon intersection is the most opportunity to go pursue. I can't imagine anyone not being in, if you live in St. Louis, why you wouldn't be all in on this idea. It just seems like it's exactly the type of thing that we want to foster and the, the exact type of leveraging our history and our infrastructure and again, turning it to our advantage. Certainly. Uh, Tim, fascinating. We're going to wrap this up before I think both of us melt because we, it is warm in here. Yep. But it's fascinating. Love what you guys are doing. It's been very interesting to see it and fascinating to talk to you. I appreciate it. Thanks, it's sir. Awesome. Appreciate it.